Good morning. This is Mrs. Stephanie Shemansky to teach your lesson this morning. Um, this is appropriate for older boys and girls, probably third grade and up, parents, just to let you know. Let's pray this morning. Dear Jesus, I just thank you for this time with um, my boys and girls students. Um, we just thank you that they given up their time and that they are meeting together with me and with you to learn more about you, Lord. I just pray that there will be a lesson for them and they will take this to heart. I pray for my words to come easily and hope they enjoy it, Lord. Thank you for this day and everything you've given us because we truly need you and you are the power and control in our lives in jesus name amen well first of all i want to review a little bit about what happened the last couple of weeks with our lesson i taught two weeks ago and it was about um jericho and joshua and how they surrounded the city if you remember for six days and on the seventh day they made all the noise and the walls came tumbling down and then down and then the next lesson last week was about um, them taking over the city and destroying it except for the spy um, Rahab and um, her family so that is what happened previously and now in this lesson Joshua has died already and Israel is doing evil things and they are suffering for it so we're gonna the name of our lesson is talks about Gideon today and Gideon is chosen so I'm going to be reading in the from the Old Testament in judges in just a minute but you know, sometimes I like to think about words that you're going to use or hear in the lesson. And here are some terms that I think would be helpful if we think about it for a minute. Um, oppressed, the people were oppressed. That means their enemy was governing them and being very hate, hateful and um, harming them and wouldn't let them survive very well. Baal, or I'm sure you've heard that term, is a false god and there were peoples that were worshiping their Baals, their false gods. Asherah is another false god um, and they would erect poles to worship this goddess. Another one is contend. Uh, contend in this passage means um, that they would fight for. Contend or fight for. Oh, also the Asherah would take various forms, but there was some kind of physical form um, or image, something you could see that would tell you it was the Asherah. Okay, let's put those away for now. And as we read, you can hopefully understand that context a little better. So, I'm looking at Judges, chapter 6. It's in the Old Testament, and it's right after Joshua that we were in a couple weeks ago. And I'm looking at Judges, chapter 6, verses 11 to 32. Judges 6, 11 to 32. I'm reading out of the English Standard Version, is what we have in church. Um, so, 
if you have that version, we will match up perfectly. This section is called the call of Gideon. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebinth at Ophrah, which belonged to Josh, the Abizarite, while his son Gideon was beating out the wheat in the winepress to hide from the Midianites. Verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. And Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all his wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of, the, of Midian. Verse 14. And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you? And he said to him, this was Gideon, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? Behold, my clan, my tribe is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. And the Lord said to him, But I will be with you. And you shall strike the Midianites as one man. Verse 17. And Gideon said to him, If I have now found favor in your eyes, then show me a sign that is you who speak with me. Please do not depart from here until I come to you and bring out my present and set it before you. And God said, I will stay till you return. Verse 19. So Gideon went into his house and prepared a young goat and unleavened cakes from an ephah of flour. Um, that's a measure. The meat he put in a basket and the broth he put in a pot and brought them to him under the terebinth and presented them. And the angel of God said to him, Take the meat and the unleavened cakes and put them on this rock and pour the broth over them. And he did so. And then the angel of the Lord reached out the tip of the staff from the staff that was in his hand and touched the meat and the cake, unleavened cakes and fire sprang from the rock and consumed the meat and the unleavened cakes. And the angel of the Lord vanished from his sight. Verse 22. Then Gideon perceived that he was the angel of the Lord. And Gideon says, Alas, O Lord God, for now I have seen the angel of the Lord face to face. But the Lord said unto him, Peace be to you. Do not fear. You shall not die. Then Gideon built an altar there to God, to the Lord and called it, The Lord is Peace. And to this day it still stands at Oprah, which belongs to the Abyssalites. And we will stop our reading there. And let's think about what we just read. I have some questions for you just to think about. I know I can't hear you. Um, oh, actually, let's wait for the questions for just a minute. I have a picture to show you because I could not figure this out with my iPad. Without turning the camera and the iPad. And so I wanted to, sh I took a picture out. I wanted to show you something. I have behind me on, on my floor two tools. The top one's a hammer. The bottom one is a sledgehammer. Oh yeah, that's right. Well, Mr. Shemansky helped me. And I want you to think about it's not the man, but God who delivers. 
if um, we had an adult man and a child in here, well, let's, let's say a two or three year old, like a toddler, and I wanted the toddler to um, pick up one of the objects, um, my, my task was to break a rock up. Now, if the man picked up the hammer and used it to break a rock, think about the work that could get done. Or if I ask a toddler to pick up that sledgehammer, I mean, take a look at those two things. The top one's a regular hammer. The sledgehammer is huge. Which one would you rather have remove the garden, the rock in your garden at home? Of course, the sledgehammer. Well, it's kind of like God being the power here. Why would you pick the sledgehammer over the smaller? Okay, it's got more power, right? But if the toddler has the sledgehammer and the man has the hammer, which one is going to get the most work done? Okay. How does this little story help you to understand why God would choose Gideon? I'll let you think about that for a second. And if a parent is with you, you can discuss that with your parent. Well, Gideon is like that little hammer that can't do much on his own. But with the power of God behind him, he could do anything. But in the end, God gets the credit, doesn't he? Absolutely. Okay. Um... God wants to get the glory in the stories and in the world. Um, and just like Gideon, our salvation completely depends on God. Gideon said, I couldn't do it. I'm just this little guy and all my family are these little guys. How are we going to do this, God? But in Matthew 28, 20, Jesus also says, Behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. The Lord was with the Gideon in the battle, and he will be with us as well. Um, yes. Yes. Okay, let's think about this for a second. What was the warning that God gave Israel? Do you remember in Judges in the first and second chapter? Well, if they did not destroy the people of Canaan, they would be tempted to go to the idolatry of the Canaanites. And that would be to worship the Baals and the Asherahs, as we talked about in a vocabulary lesson um, before. What happened to Israel when they did not annihilate the Canaanites? Can you remember? Well, they ended up doing exactly what God said they would do, and they worshiped the false gods. That was the evil they did that we discussed at the beginning of the lesson. Why was it mercy that God raised up Gideon? Mercy. Well, God could have destroyed the Israelites for their adultery. He destroyed A-C-H-A-N, Achan, and his whole family for stealing gold. But here, even though Gideon's own father had an altar to Baal, God not only spared Gideon, but he said Gideon, sent Gideon to deliver them from the Midianites. 
So that is mercy, even though his own father was um, worshiping the Baal. What can we learn about God's favor toward Israel to guide our lives? God's favor. That's the good things um, that he had done for them. What can we learn from God's favor towards Israel to guide our lives? Go ahead and talk with that someone or think it. Or you can say it to yourself if you're there by yourself. Well, if we do not follow God's word, we will serve other gods. In the Bible, it's clear that we only have two options. We're either for God or we're against God. And if we do not worship Christ, we worship other things, don't we? And we could call those gods. Though we are not tempted by the Baal worship and worshiping the images that they did, sometimes we worship power, money, sports figures, comfort, prosperity, that means doing well, and other worldly pursuits, being fit, um, to, to excess, to excess. Well, anyway, many other things can take the place of God in our hearts. So, those could be our false gods. Remember, it is God who delivers. One other um, little tidbit about the Canaanites, who were the evil people that um, Israel was to destroy. You know, they thought their gods would control the rain and the growth of the crops. And Baal was their chief god. But God told Israel that he was taking them to a land that didn't have irrigation or much water. So they would have to depend on him for the rain. So it's it. you kind of wonder, or you kind of get, that they, excuse me, were trusting in the false god to bring them rain. That maybe they didn't know about the true god. But the Israelites did. And it's obvious that God did not want his people tempted to those false gods. God alone would bring the rain. And Baal was the idol who could do nothing. Okay, let me put this aside. And we have um, a little, act I have a little activity for you. So if you have any clay or Play-Doh at home, you can get that out. You might wanna stop the tape for a second or the video. Get that out, and I'll show you what I've done. Now, hopefully, you can see it. Well, here's a little figure I made that could illustrate what they might have been doing, the Baal worshippers. They were. We said they were pictures. There was something that they were worshiping. So, I like to fly, I like to travel, so here's my creature with his wings. <laughs> and then, I love the water and I love to swim, so my creature has strong legs and fins. And, excuse me, he has a fin on the top and then he's got these wonderful feet that are like flappers. And so this is kind of what he ended up like. Okay, kind of weird looking, isn't he? He's not made in the image of man, that's for sure. So, let's think about that. Now, it might be different than the idols that Israel made. It might, <laughs> it might be a little, it might be somewhat the same. But tell me this. 
If this were my idol, if this were I was what I was worshiping, can he talk? No, oh, I'm not hearing anything. That's a good thing. Can he, is he living? No, you say. He's made out of clay, Mrs. Shemansky. What are you talking about? He cannot move on his own. I have to move him, don't I? Look, I'm the one. This thing can't fly and he can't swim. So, is he alive? Or is he doing anything for me? Absolutely not. It is foolish to serve idols and worship idols and Baal worship. If you have time and you'd like to do that, you can uh, think about writing down everything that your Baal says. And everything their idol will do for you. Will your idol do anything for you? Think about that. Okay. In closing, I'm going to read a verse in 1 Corinthians. That is the New Testament. So if you still have your Bible there, you could find 1 Corinthians with me. Chapter 12, verse 2. And this is... Paul speaking to the people of the New Testament time. You know that when you were pagans, you were led astray to mute idols, however you were led. So what I showed you was the mute idol. And can you write down something now that God said or did in this lesson? God talked to Gideon, didn't he? He gave Gideon a sign. He said he would be the power behind Gideon to destroy the Midianites. And let's think about God being the one who saves us from our sin and speaks to us through his word. The one true God. Now, if you made your bail, you can destroy your bail. <laughs> yes, you can. Just like me. Okay, let's bow in prayer. Dear Lord and Savior, we just thank you that you are the power and the strength behind our lives. You came to save us, Lord. You're the one who came down from earth. You are active. You are alive today because you rose from the grave. You are the one we put our trust and hope in to move us and to save people and bring us back to your home in heaven one day. Thank you for these listeners. And I pray they'll be back next week, Lord Jesus. Amen.